now recording. We are nothing but bones. Do you understand me, Muhammad? And if I have to start contacting your family, I will. Play the game with me. You will lose it very quickly. I have more resources than you do, and I'm a lot smarter than you. And more importantly, I'm a whole lot meaner than you are. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be honest here. This drama, this whole art drama thing, it's been so, it's so convoluted that I still do not really know what's going on. I've watched a four-hour video from Cecil McFly for background, as well as hours of content from creators like Kumo and Dakumu, which, Jesus Christ, they sound alike. So just for a quick synopsis, from my understanding, the art community is on fire, as two titans within the community have completely fallen from grace. Hopeless Peaches, an art commentary channel who once had a public run-in with one of the more popular channels in the community uh, at that point, which her name is Creepshow Art, uh, and you know, Hopeless Peaches was demolished during this. However, like a true underdog, when Creepshow Art dissolved into YouTube dust, Peaches made her comeback and thrived within the community. But alas, it seems like Creepshow, like what Creepshow had done prior, uh, is similar to what uh, Hopeless Peaches is going through now, as her channel is completely deleted and gone. And then we have Leo Convoy, a man I absolutely f***ing loathe, an anime protagonist pedophile hunter who does stupid rundowns of pedo drama within the community while putting together action figures. He is the absolute, absolute worst in the community as he likes to pretend he has power and is just way too respected to the point where people fear him within what is called the Senate. Did I mention he also likes to dress up like a lion? Yeah, that's a thing. Now, the Senate, the Senate will be explained further in this episode, but it's basically a Discord server filled with a bunch of transgender artspergs who probably pee in cups and cuddle with their anime pillows. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the art community. And to help me explain this drama, I have with me today my thumbnail artist uh, and researcher, uh, Hellbent. How's it going, Hellbent? Yeah, it's going well. Um, I am the unpaid orbiter extraordinaire. True. Nice to be here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as well as our favorite special guest uh, uh, and Spurg lore master, uh, Beckett of Crabs. Hi. I hate you and that you got me involved in this. Thanks, buddy. Oh, you're in too deep now. Uh, also with me is uh, my co-host, uh, Mr. Beavers McWood. Hello, I didn't do any of that research that Matt talked about. I'm going into this completely blind. Well, it's uh, before, yeah, before we talk about yeah, I didn't research, do shit. But you are the one who kind of like brought this to my attention like a year ago. Yeah, but I used to. Okay, so, uh, so what it was is I would follow up on Leo. But the problem is every, I'd, I'd catch up on a singular drama, but then I'd be like, oh, I should look into this guy. And then it would just be hours upon hours of content that you'd have to watch. So... I never really got into it. I just know that the man's a scumbag. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. I, I, I cannot. I, I've been watching clips from him, uh, and it is so fucking annoying how he talks. He, he just does this thing. Where I was, he, dude, I've seen clips where like he comes in, he's like, listen, guys, you need to shut the fuck up. You need to listen to me. And they're all like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're sorry. We're sorry. Like they just bow down to this lion man pedophile hunter. He <laughs> he very he very much gives off um I am your mom vibes. You know True. like when your mom would shit on you? Yeah. Not I'm your dad. He's not masculine enough to be I am your dad. He yeah. gives off very I am very disappointed in you right now. I'm not mad. I am disappointed in you. Mm. Which is makes me hate him even more. Oh no, he's mad all right. He yells at people. Yeah, he, he yells he yells at children. All right, so this is go. Listen, all right, for the the audience that is listening, if you are not familiar with this community, don't worry. Uh, we aren't either. Uh, but <laughs> it is extremely convoluted to the point where uh, you could easily get lost. So we're going to do our best to try and explain the lore. Now, there's so much to this uh community that you could actually you could go to watch Cecil McFly's video, which is four hours long. You can get a full background of all of it. Uh, we're going to stick with what is called the Senate. Now, for a little bit of background, Hellbent Beckett, help me out here. Like, let's let's keep it short. Like, wh what are we dealing with here? Like, oh, like as far as lore goes, like in, in, in simplistic terms, like, can you tell me what exactly uh, has led? Uh, how has this led to where we're at right now? All right. So, generally, I think we should be a clear art community. It's the same as normal commentary, but 
instead of gameplay, they use shitty speed drawings. And there have been basically two main arcs in the drama. So the first part was the large meltdown of 2019-2021, which mm-hmm. is what's covered in Cecil's four-hour video in detail. And then uh, the second, more recent arc, it's the Pedo Hunter Hunter Crusade against Lyo Convoy and his Lieutenant Hopeless Peaches. Yeah. Who, by the way, just noting now, just recently started using he they pronouns. What? Yep. Really? I feel like deliberately just to fuck us up. They switched <laughs> up the pronouns? No. Wait, who, who yeah. did that? Hopeless, Hopeless Peaches is a he now. Um, uh, fuck him. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> read, read it the way that it's written. Yeah. Well, we're going to go good faith. We're gonna, I'm going to attempt to refer to them as they. I'm going to remind myself that they are they because they are as wide as uh. multiple people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so very quick, very briefly, the recap of the 2019-2021 drama. Yeah, let me let, let me see if I can simplify. Like Kai yeah. and Omnia versus Hopeless Peaches, right? And then mm-hmm. later on, it became Kai versus Omnia, and then Hopeless Peaches is also hates both of them. Back. Can it, you it, it, can you mention like a, a can you mention like it's like the most dysfunctional trifecta that you've just mentioned there. Each one of those individuals, I hate. I can't stand any of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there, there is not a single good person in this whole... Um, in this whole. I want to give really. Omnia a chance, though. Can we give Omnia a chance, maybe? No, no, okay. she, no they suck. <laughs> by, by the way, non-binary, so they... Um, uh, no, the, what you need to know is um, it wasn't just Kai and Omnia versus um, Hopeless Speeches. At some point, it was like a 6v1 against Peaches, yeah. and Peaches yeah. somehow came out as the winner. And um, it was a lot of just mudslinging, really dumb stuff, really hilarious um, allegations and accusations. Uh, my favorite one, uh, it wasn't about Peaches, but it was a creator who, it doesn't matter. But they got dragged because in a video discussing drawings, they referred to a trans male character's chest as big milky titties. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so yeah. that's the caliber of, of that drama, and there's a response to response <clears throat> to response, which is why it's very convoluted to get through. Yeah. But, but all that we need to know is that essentially, uh, Creepshow Art was one of the driving forces behind all of it, as she was uh, behind the scene manipulating stuff via local and via DMs with people. But in the very end, after the Creepshow Art um, debacle happened, uh, she was ousted from the community, a bunch of other people um, were as well. Kai and Omnia essentially both had their channels deleted uh, because, yes, they got into beef with each other. Yeah, because, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. So Kai, mm-hmm. Kai and Omnia used to be a couple, and they mm-hmm. lived together. And then at yeah, one until point, Kai got... rocked that girl's shit. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a, there's a bit of a domestic disturbance in the household. And, uh, yeah. Uh, no, but it's okay. Been, it's okay. He didn't. He didn't need a check. She's non-binary. It was just a. Yeah. It was just a bigger they that beat up a less big they. Well, there's been that a lot of. Cool. Uh, there's a lot of been. There's been a lot of discourse between these two. Uh, probably about ten videos each at this point. Uh, basically, the argument is Omnia says Kai attacked her. Uh, uh, Kai says Omnia attacked him first, and he was just defending himself. This would actually go to court. There's legal documents. Uh, this is a, there's this whole thing. There's this drama is so crazy. There's a point where Tipster yeah. did a thumbnail with Omnia's face and it had like a, a bigger black eye and like all this shit was popping off. Uh, so yeah, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's By the way, yeah. I don't know if we're going to get into it, but the funniest thing from that whole court case, cause, mm-hmm. um, I've watched Kai, right? Cause Kai has me Why? blocked on Twitter because he hates me. Um, surprise. But what, what's interesting about that drama was when they went to court, they weren't fighting over cars, houses, uh, serious assets. They were fighting over video games. Yeah, Nintendo Switch games. <laughs> <laughs> That's my game. I paid 60 you bucks for that me. game, not you. <laughs> you took my games, my cat food, you hacked my channel. Like, all, all, like, it's just crazy. But the most important thing that they actually fought over was the cat, and I think Kai won it in the end. He got the pussy in the end. Hey. Oh, damn. Um, uh, but um, Kai did delete Omnia's channel, from what I can tell, uh, yeah. which is pretty shitty, as we can all agree. 100%. But um, one thing to actually really point out at the beginning here is that the most 
important characteristic of the whole art commentary community is that there is, um, you know, the super leftist, um, but there is a lot of tone policing and moral grandstanding, which obviously uh, the parties that throw accusations most often do not adhere to the same standards. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's hours and hours and hours of content being generated in response and response to response, etc., where most of it is just accusing each other of not being sensitive to this this or that bullshit. My mm -hmm. favorite point of um, Cecil McFly's video was that uh, in when Omnia and Kai started beefing, because when they were on the same side against Peaches, for example, they really enjoyed accusing Peaches of being racist because she was fighting with black creators. Um, well, Omnia is half black, and in their beef, apparently, to quote Cecil, Kai revokes Omnia's black card, essentially implying she's not black enough. Damn. <laughs> well, that's, their whole thing is like, uh, you're going after me because I'm LGBTQ, or you're going after me because I'm a black person, or you're going after me because I like children. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, but, you uh, know, Beckett mentioned it on a recent stream, um, and I really like that summary uh, of the community, that their drama can be either really petty, like you traced some art, or mm -hmm. really serious, such as you preyed on minors. There is no yeah. in between. Yeah, it could go and it could go either way. And you had someone like Creepshow Art that was kind of like the the queen bee of that community, and then she just like self destructed, and uh, in a very uh, public drama that caused her to be. I think she is the uh, the YouTuber who's lost the most subs during a like crisis like that, and her channel's gone now, completely gone. But uh, yeah, Hopeless Speeches ended up coming out on top. Uh, and then ended up getting uh, connected with this guy named Leo Convoy, who's a furry who dresses up like a lion, who also hunts pedophiles. And he's all, he's known for, like, getting into calls with retards that have been accused of, like, grooming and stuff and being mm -hmm. like, let me talk to your mother. I need to tell her what you've been doing with your life. You know, stuff like that. I also known for, like, attacking, like, 15-year-old kids and, like, calling schools, yeah, calling so... moms, calling dads. Go ahead, Beckett. Give, give me so, some more. So, like... I because we've got the 2019 and the more recent stuff, but just to be clear, the reason that this is partly so convoluted is there is another stage to this that goes a bit further back, and mm -hmm. it's it's relevant to Lyo and the like uh, culture that's grown up around them. So this all starts way way back with Metica uh, and the My Little Pony community, the Bronies. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Senate and uh, kind of the culture there is actually just the remnants of the My Little Pony commentary community yeah. and the art commentary, uh, like the animation kind of critique community. Um, and they've all met at, up at cons. They've, they've all had, you know, conversations with each other. And I've, I've spoken to a few people like Queen Serafina, who knows a lot of law. They've been around for about seven years, I believe. They've known Leo, uh, Leo that long. Um, and so like they they've had that series of grooming scandals. So uh the kind of big ones I guess are the Toon Critic scandal uh which was a brony analyst who groomed like a 14 year old through uh -huh. pony ERP. Uh then there was a couple of other minor ones then there was video the who fuck was a brony analyst I'm sorry. <laughs> so they're people who like watch the my little pony cartoons and analyze the cartoons and the law and the like I don't know, fucking shit behind it. I, it's it's fucking bizarre. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Lily Orchard is one of these as well. Right. Did did Leo Convoy come from this community? So yeah, well, it, it seems a bit difficult to place him in some regards. Yes and no is the answer. So the Senate um is the surviving remnants from a server called Atop the Barrel. Uh-huh. Um, and because of the grooming hunting that went on with people like Toon Critic and others that sort of holding people to account thing basically entered into Leo, Leo's server, which was has been described to me uh, by someone called Gilded Poo um, as kind of a barbarian server. It's very blood sportsy. Yeah, so um, what, what I've been told is like barbarian means blood sports in their community, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And so yeah, he, he basically entered through, Leo gets more involved through there, he gets connected with Peaches, uh, continues this hunting and really like steps it up over the last couple of years. Um, and there were a couple of like you mentioned, like attacking a fifteen year old. Let's be clear about what that was because I, I think painting a picture of uh, Lyo 
and what the Senate's like is kind of important. So that particular instance is a kid named Jax. Uh, they were arguing, he was arguing with another 15-year-old about MS Paint dick drawings. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so two 15-year-old, two 15-year-olds were fighting, and Leo Convoy inserted himself into this, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and Leo basically is like, you need to be really, se- this is really serious, you can't be talking about this. Enters the call, says to this kid, essentially, and I'm very condensed here, um, you should be scared of me. I can find out your address. Jack says, I'm not scared of you. And he says, okay, well, I'll turn up at your house then. Jack's still not scared, says, I live in a gangland area, I've got guns, blah, blah, blah. blah. I've been shot doesn't... at, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lyo doesn't manage to beat him down. So Lyo's response to this is to phone the kid's school and report him as a potential school shooter. Yeah. Like, and, and his argument changes, right? It goes from like, oh, this kid was uh, talking shit, so I talked shit back, to, uh, oh, this kid kind of worried me because I don't know. Yeah, if I was, could be I was a deeply concerned. I was, yeah, I was, I was concerned. so worried, yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. live in the um, United States of America. Where this is a, This is like a. This yeah. is like a thirty-eight-year-old man, by the way, going in and fighting <laughs> with fifteen. This is like me if I were to like go to Spawn Dial and be like, hey, Spawn Dial, I'm going to get in touch with your parents because you keep. DMing women of and wanting feed pics. I'm going to let them know what's going on. It's yeah, yeah, so he, fucking ridiculous. He he makes them put their mums on the phone on the phone on the Discord call. He did that to Doctor O. He's done that to Rin. I believe that he's done that to uh, other people as well. Um, yeah, it's just this pattern of insanity, um, and they keep letting it happen. So yeah, that's that's kind of the culture there. And Peaches herself, um, who is his. Uh, describes herself as his daughter. They use a yeah. term called found yeah. family. Yeah, how did they meet? Like, wh- wh- how did they connect? I want to know. It's not really a clear line. Again, it- it's kind of like a merging of a lot of different groups and communities because of the kind of Bernie stuff in there. But um, as far as I can tell, uh, Peaches is somebody who got more involved in the accountability stuff, I think probably to do with uh, kind of her own previous dramas. This isn't new to her um because we can see all the stuff in 2019 and uh then Lyo is just a really good conduit for that like the senate itself was run by queen serafina for a while now um queen serafina is another content creator in this mm-hmm. kind of grouping and sphere uh she's like hosted a couple of the calls like the jacks one with the 15 year old kid is she trans yes Yes, I believe so. Just Noted. assume yes for everybody in this conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I like. I mean, I like Queen. I've I've had some good chats with her. Um, but yeah, so she, but the way she describes it is she didn't have a lot of like control, um, and eventually just turned it over. But it seems to have got worse over time, not better. Well, like mm-hmm. I, I, oh, yeah. like it's become more woke, and one of the things you'll see if you look on Twitter is them talking about well, we've changed the etiquette. We're trying to make sure people aren't bullied as much, all this thing. But like they, they change the language and like, well, we won't say ableist things, but they are fully happy with like life ruination, going after people in very personal ways, um, mm-hmm. going after kids, people with mental disabilities. Um, I wanted to point out something though. Um, so this whole thing, how, uh, you know, Lyle's uh, channel grew from um, essentially aligning himself with features and he also quite quickly realized that uh, these exposés and Peter Hunt videos got uh, pronouncedly more views than his normal content. Mm-hmm. So whenever he posts his normal shit, it flops. So I would say that there is definitely an incentive for him to continuously churn out uh, drama and especially these Peter Hunting exposés. I'm not saying like that's why there are so many of them, but there is definitely an incentive to keep all of it going. That's definitely why there's so many of them. There's that's yeah. definitely why there's so many of them. 100 percent Yeah. I've I've literally seen his channel before. He posts one of his stupid videos going over Thundercats or his fucking Gundams that he likes to build, and he gets like 5k views, and then he posts uh a fucking me uh, screaming at this autistic five-year-old that is actually a pedophile. Um, and then he gets like a shit ton of views, and I don't think he does it for the money. I just think he does it for internet relevancy points. Yeah, within his circle. Mm-hmm. That's a re- yeah, that's a really interesting point because I do think that um, d- like whatever the Senate was before, I think Lia's personality, which kind of I would personally describe as quite um, 
you know, vindictive and malicious and uh, egomaniacal. I think it contributed to the toxicity not only never going away, but getting worse. Okay, so yeah. I, I, I think it's important to note a couple of things quickly with this. So from the kind of view side and like the content creation side, you've got people like, again, Queen Serafina, who've done uh, kind of look ins to people, uh, covered cases. Uh, like I, I won't mention any because we will go down massive rabbit holes if I do. But she's done like five, I think, uh, in the last mm -hmm. several years. Um, something like that. It's not many. Lyo has done uh, tens of them. Just an incredible amount of these videos. And they do get views. Yeah. Now, with the toy stuff, because it's interesting you say that, Beavers. Because I think, like, I've heard rumors that he's fucking raking it in off this. Um, because of how his Patreon works. Because it's per creation. So ah. I don't know how that links up. But it's like if you help, help me out with that per creation. What do you mean? So like rather than being paid monthly, it seems to be like you give money every time like he makes a video. That's the oh. rumor I've heard. I, it's something I'm still looking into, but it's still like it's potentially quite a lot of revenue if he's putting up toy videos or things that he can make quite quickly, which is you know an accusation that was thrown my way. Also, you know, like well, you know, he, he doesn't have cheap hobbies. Let's be, let's be clear. When he makes these models and things, some of those that can be like, I don't know, eighty dollars a piece. Yeah, uh, they're not all playing as a virgin is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> this man is married, and um, as I said before, and I'll say it again, his wife is in the same basement as Tipsters. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, there was uh, there was some recent leaks about that actually, because so so I should probably explain the found family thing because I th I think that's also important to kind of give yeah, a yeah yeah, yeah. Picture. let me like, you can correct me here so found family Leo Convoy has like uh has met like minors in the community who he's adopted and one of the daughters is also considered hopeless peaches That's so if, th not they're not minors. minors they're like eighteen and twenty year olds um who he he adopted so he can fuck them in massive. <laughs> Well, Roar! <laughs> he does, he does <laughs> Charitably, I would say so he can't be charged um, for luring minors across state lines. There was a situation. All right, maybe I'm getting this confused. Right, there was a situation where there was a minor in the community who was being like sexually harassed by their mother's boyfriend. And yeah, he, that like, was one of the kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when they turned eighteen, they went and lived with Leo Convoy, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay. that's, right. that's now Jordan, who's transitioned. To oh, trans great. Uh, oh, originally, yeah. this was uh, their original handle with Mint Heart. Um, and Jordan, along with another person named Jay, both went and lived with Leo Convoy to yeah. uh, be safe and be, be cared for. Uh, that didn't go well. I, I don't know. I've heard, you know, apparently Leo's wife doesn't like any of this shit. Uh, some leaks came out recently about uh, from Peaches. Uh, apparently, Lyo's wife accused her of being a home wrecker. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I saw those. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this this whole thing is a little bit crazy. And like one of the things Kumu's done is he's gone and interviewed some of these people um, and talked to them and been like, "Hey, say that, what, say what, it, what you, like? are you saying Kumo or a Kumu? A, a Kumu." Kumu. Kumu, got you. No, no, Kumu, as in rather than Akumu. Can we just like have a fucking Kumu one and Kumu two? I I like these kids, but like, were you saying it too? All right, so Kumo interviewed some of them, right? And then yeah, Akumu, Kumu did. Kumu, okay. yeah, Akumu and Kumu. Can I just um, say that Akumu sounds like a Kumar? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> I think it's important. Well, that's though. weird because the other one's actually a Kumar. Ah, oh, they both suck. Yeah. I love them. There you got Kumo the Cutter. <laughs> you got Kumo the I wasn't going to say and, it. I wasn't going to say it. And Akumo the Simp, Akumu the simp right? Because Akumo was simping for Madame, you know, back in 2019. Yeah, but he was 16, so who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking to Beckett about that, right? Because I was asking Kumo. I was like, yo, did Akumu uh, simp for that Madame chick? By the way, Madame was like this crazy uh, leafy clone that went insane over some art drama and ended up... Uh, uh, basically being accused of stealing funds for a GoFundMe to go uh, sue Onision, which she never did. She just went to Washington and went to a concert and she, her career was destroyed. And Akumu was allegedly one of the guys that was really kind of like gunt guarding or like e-girl guarding for him or her. And then it kind of, uh, and that's kind of how one of the servers was made because they were all like anti-Madame. But yes, 
but it turns out it turns out Akumu was like a minor during all this. So I was just like, all right, fine, whatever. I don't care. Sip in whatever. Who cares? Anything else on the found family stuff? Because I know we're getting mixed up in different places. So I just want to make sure we're back on the same page. Uh, Beckett. Um, yeah, I'll probably put a clip in. Uh, that's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, yeah I sent it. Sent it to you. Do you want to? Do you want to sh- show it to the guys to get their reaction? Uh, yeah, d- yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say to explain what it is. Um, so this is not Leo. This is uh somebody else. Petrol cart doesn't doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who that is. But the point is that um, this whole found family concept. So that's not unique to Leo and Peaches and Leo's other kids. Uh, it is a common thing for them to role play in the art community. And at 527 there, uh, there is a really nice speech from this person who used to consider Lyo their brother. Okay. The only, the only people I've ever heard use the term found family or like heroin addicts. Yeah. Yeah, that's like a that's like a drug addict thing to say. My yeah. found family, yeah, the found my family, family. kicked me to the fucking curb. <laughs> yeah, my found family is the people I put money in with, so we can all get heroin together, and sometimes they yeah. steal from me when I'm sleeping. They found the family, yeah. but lost the plot. Is yeah. my pitch for the tagline. Yeah, you made a promise to be these kids' father, but you don't know what being a parent is, Thomas. Being a father is staying up until four in the morning because your kid had another nightmare or PTSD episode and they need you to hold them until the fear passes. Being a father is learning all your kids safe foods because they're autistic and have texture issues and if they don't have safe foods in the house they might not eat at all. Being a father is teaching your child that it's okay to have emotions and be emotional but also teaching them how to regulate those feelings and not let those emotions rule their heart and their choices helping them Uh, this was a decision you were supposed to discuss before the child was born you were supposed to abort (laughs) that thing that thing should have never breathed there it's not that they're actual children they are referring to so this uh female voice uh referred to themselves as a fellow father and they are talking about having a daughter that daughter is a fucking whole ass other adult. They did not give birth to that adult. And this is the speech that they give, uh, explaining to Laya what it, what it means to be a father, even though neither of them are. Yeah. Was, uh, this, yeah, one of the, was this one of the kids? No, no, this is, this is one of the kids' uncles, if you will. What the fuck is this, bro? What is wrong with exactly, these people? Exactly, exactly. Because like, they do refer to, them, uh, to themselves in this video that as Jordan's uncle this is what uh, happens when you sit your yep. children in front of like anime playing or like my little pony playing or something this is exactly what happens this is too much cartoon network you know the, it, it, like turn off the television uh like take away the youtube kids app fucking this shit's really weird yeah like, play a bit more back it because i want to learn what being a father is helping them learn how to file taxes or change a flat tire it's teaching your daughter how to throw a punch teaching your son gun safety i don't think anybody <laughs> that's referring to themselves this way should own a gun i don't think any of you should own guns uh, no. take them away take them away <laughs> take them into the asylum lock the door it's dancing at your child's wedding and holding a funeral for their fucking childhood dog if they ask you. But more than anything, fatherhood is sacrifice. Oh my god. Oh my lord. Uh. I lost it when I first heard this. Like, this is, this is again, an adult. And like, when they begin the video by talking about being a fellow father and talking about their daughter. And I was texting Beckett and I was saying, I swear to God. There better be an actual fucking baby that had come out of that person's body. No, there isn't. No, it's another adult. So yeah, that's just to give you a flavor of the phone family concept. And I disagree. Children are supposed to be obedient. There should be no difference between a dog and your child. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you, life except you shouldn't fuck your dog. Well, I wasn't gonna do that to my kid or my dog. I don't know why that's you brought that joke. up. That's a oh really, my God. that's a really weird fucking thing to bring up. <laughs> Jesus, no, right. that's, 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 that's it. That's it. Right. That's it. Right. Okay. Right. okay, Jesus. So yeah, so that's that's the, sort of the found family stuff, and you that term comes up uh, fairly regularly. But yeah, moving on from that, um, I guess I guess the FK. Uh, the fruitcake server, yeah, 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 is mm-hmm. is probably the best place to go because that's where sort of this uh, <laughs> descent happened. Yeah. So, um, we watched a stream together on Rosa. Mm-hmm. 
Now, Rosa was somebody who was in another server that was exposed that had a uh, groomer in it um, called Nekapon, I believe. Mm -hmm. And basically, Rosa got chewed out across like three videos. Um, The first one's just sort of re-emerged. The second one was just a straight convo with uh, Leo. And the final one was like a 60-person Senate call ripping this woman apart now this woman is brain damaged she like can have seizures from stress if you listen to her she's clearly not fucking there um she it takes her a while to form sentences and uh they're just going super hard on her they 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 are full anime villain arc elio at one point i believe says that he will steal her essence um so they're they're full-on yeah fuck fuck this person now, the problem is that uh, Rosa didn't really do anything during this. That she, all, she, all that happened with her was she was either not a mod or a very minor mod. This is a bit of a debated fact. Um, and she was made aware of this. She went to the server owner called Rebecca. Um, and Rebecca like said, don't worry about it. I'll deal with it. It's fine. And then things didn't happen there's a whole nother fucking expose video from mr enter that's just come out um they did kick them out but only after four days and yeah the li- liar screams four days Rosa, and like you can hear him almost popping in aneurysm it's quite kind of hilarious but it's he was like calling scary. her a whore and shit right um i don't remember that but he was definitely calling her like ableist stuff and um rosa, like it about rosa? yeah he said shut your whore yeah. mouth Oh, maybe, yeah. Oh, she calls yeah. a mouth, mouth, a mush mouth, and all of that. And it's yeah. like, we are, you know, we're part of an, I would say, an edgy community. We use, you know, the dreaded R word. But Rosa is somebody that you don't, we wouldn't feel comfortable actually using that word against because as she is definitely not all there. And uh, it is, it is a very tough listen, um, those calls. Yeah, you could tell by listening to it, like, she is not, uh, uh, she does not have like the cognitive ability to understand what's even going on at that point, and she just kind of wants to get out of there, but she doesn't know that she can just like, hey, I, I'm gonna go. She thinks, so, uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I, so... yeah. I have a whole bit on uh, the mechanics, kind of of the Senate that I think we'll go in in a bit. Uh, but I, I did look into, and I do have an answer of why would anyone join such a public execution call and stay in it. But uh, let's carry on, I guess, with the uh, kind of FCK. Um, yeah. Stuff. So the thing is, th- the reason they raped her was essentially, oh, well, you're an adult. You should have known. And that's a very similar reasoning to kind of why Lyo should be, you know, raking mm-hmm. uh, peaches. Now, a call came out between Lyo. Well, I say a call came out. Lyo chopped up two calls between himself and Crystal and Crystal himself and Peaches. Uh, and he's quite clearly coaching Peaches. Peaches is in tears. I just didn't know. I had no idea about this. Um, now she knew she uh, like because Lyo Lyo was offered the logs uh, for this server from Akumu um, in I believe March of 2023. Mm-hmm. So it's been it's been like a year. Um, he ghosted Akumu. Um, he did get the logs eventually, but he's had them for at least several months. Um, and the day before Akumu's video dropped, Peaches released an accountability statement and then went very quiet. Uh, and it, it, it's quite clear that she knew she had to. Uh, she had no fucking choice because this was about to come out. Um, and the hypocrisy is really fucking obvious. Now, this has been spun multiple ways by Senate. People, uh, their basic defense is, well, Peaches didn't groom anyone. Peaches never sent pornography. But no one's making that accusation. No one has made that accusation. It's one yeah. they're making up so they can attack it. Um, the fact is that it, like, she is favorite child. Um, she, <laughs> you know, and she she really has Lyo wrapped around uh, her little finger. That's that's really clear from any of the logs. And when that happened, he went into full defense mode. And it, it's clear that they don't go after people because they care about victims. They go after people because they like bullying people on the internet. This makes them feel strong and powerful. And Lyo is an adult man who laps as an anime villain, and. I don't know, like there's videos of him like being a samurai, and he has like just built toys. One of the, one of the and things shit. they used know. to do is they they like get into these stages, right? And they make fun of these like uh, retarded people, and they start saying, "Oh, do you think you're an anime anime protagonist?" Right? 
Yeah. But Leo, Leo is the one who usually does stuff. He does the anime speeches. He is the anime protagonist. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I'll be. I'll, I'll admit I'm a little lost right now. Uh, so where are we at with the? Uh, are we with the FCK? Server? They made fun of Mushmouth and um, Peaches, his favorite daughter. Yeah. Yes. Even though now they're a son, I guess. But um, the only thing you need to know about this whole FCK server, yes, it's an old thing. Nothing really bad happened. Nobody was groomed there. But the reason why it's being brought up and renegotiated is that... The hypocrisy, right? They just, yeah, they treated people horribly. They they threw everything, um, every argument against them. Uh, and then, obviously, it comes out that Peaches has engaged in pretty much the same, the same stuff thing. that they were So the Rosa, thing, the Rosa yeah. thing is like... Rosa was uh, friends with uh, uh, some sort of like groomer or something that was in the server, and Rosa didn't necessarily have any control of that. Uh, Rosa was Peaches... friends with the server's owner, not even the groomer. Oh yes. Okay. While Peaches was in another server years before this, uh, interacting with minors who were posting porn, right? It was some, somewhat like that. Yeah, there was porn being posted. Uh, minors could see it. Nobody cared. Yeah. And um, the only reason why it's important is because they obviously very viciously went against Rosa, but also other people. There's been a lot of this uh, in this manner. And Lyle's modus operandi usually in this situation is to throw the offending party under the bus, publicly shame them and uh, evict them from the community. But he, he has obviously refused to do that with Peaches because there's a lot of bias. And, well, also his channel basically only grew thanks to her. So that's why there is this incredible double standard with the responses, yeah. So so my hot take is this. I don't think Lyo is in control of of a lot of this. Um, I think Ooh. I think that that is a mis misread. I think Peaches is. I think Peaches mm -hmm. is the genesis of this. I think uh -huh. she is the driving force between who Lyo goes after. And you can kind of see this with Kumu. When Peaches was going after Kumu for uh, the cutting stuff, uh, mm -hmm. We've got the calls for that now. They've been rediscovered. Um, <laughs> I did some digging. Um, and it's quite clear that she's just going after Kumu because she doesn't like Kumu. Now, Lyo enters that call and downplays it. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, don't care. Don't care. Doesn't, doesn't matter. And it gets a bit lighter. Peaches doesn't like this and runs to one of Lyo's other kids, quote unquote, and bitches about it. Says that... Lyo's not treating her like part of the family, la 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 la, all this shit. Peaches manipulates Lyo. That's that's the bottom line. And I don't think he knows how to go after her because she's she's the taskmaster, not him. The irony of all of this is this big strong alpha male I'm a lion raw guy is actually just being controlled by a fat 24-year-old fucking malicious eagle. It's it's absolutely fucking bizarre. British ego at that. Uh, they're not even on the same continent. Uh, I think that there's an interesting theory, and I think there's a lot of um, credibility to it. I would say that um, he, uh, that Lyo definitely seems to have, you know, a weakness for Peaches, and he definitely um, kind of does, you know, does what they say. Um, but Lyo has also done a lot of, um, you know, malicious persecution of others of his own volition. I think they kind of enable each other's um, toxic behaviors, maybe. And uh, Peaches has now left uh, the Senate. They're not yep. in there. She's left the Senate. She's deleted her Twitter. She's deleted her 100,000 sub channel. Did um, she, she, she delete the channel she or did she private the videos? She yeah, deleted the it. channel. Oh, okay. Good um, or, yeah, there's a potential that she might have hidden it. There's also a theory that she's going to come back because she's wanted to sort of rebrand for a while, mm -hmm. um, much like Kaida. As not fat, yeah. <laughs> fat, yeah. <laughs> um, there's a bit of there's a bit of a meme of she is the moon, she is the moon, and a nice picture of her in the moon. So that's yeah, nice, it's a nice one. But yeah, so uh, she's she's gone, uh, which I think is a shame. I, I kind of I, I want to you know I wanted to see this unfold. I wanted a response. I wanted a peach's response. I'm a bit I'm a bit surprised. Yeah, but, yeah and um, Lyo is left picking up the pieces because um, he still hasn't disavowed, um, yeah. and he's still uh, making excuses for peaches, which just uh, and none of them are landing because, uh, for example, he would say, "Oh well, like in this call when this was all being discussed." Peaches is crying. They were in such distress, and I was like, "Well, nobody gave a shit about Rosa's distress." Yeah. Um, so, so I think yeah. let, let me paint let me paint a picture of like mm -hmm. just because I think this also shows the mechanics. 
Lyo's response to this was a video attacking somebody else named Crystal Flame. Now, Crystal Flame made accusations against Peaches that uh, she was allowing grooming, everything else. Uh, the strongest of those accusations, which Lyo will not address, are that Peaches uh, found the profile, or someone found the profile, of an 11-year-old girl who claims to have been sexually assaulted at a party. Peach's right. response to this in text messages in a group chat with a load of other people was that this 11-year-old was making a joke out of sexual assault and crying for attention. Uh, this wasn't something she was crying about. Uh, like It was something she put in her bio, like right at the bottom. You'd have to look for it. So it's Peach is going, well, it's, it's, not, it's not something I'm interested in, so don't talk about it. Now, mm. Lyo made a response to Crystal. In that response, he basically tries to tear Crystal apart, because Crystal is the easiest target. That didn't go well. Um, the uh, it's Lyo has been deleting comments. Uh, it's not getting many likes. Um, it's not had great engagement. It, it's not been a good tack. Now, the thing everyone's waiting for, and the thing that was meant to be out a week ago, was an actual response to all of this. Not an attack on Crystal. So Lyo's losing a lot of support as well. Like he, he's got the core sort of simps and people who still think he's the best person in the world because they won't watch any other content. But his yeah. friends are abandoning. I mean, like the video from Patchwork where you know he's talking about sacrifice. He was close friends with Lyo, and he's like, "Yeah, fuck you." Other well, other uh, people are so not. Where where are the sides at now? Like who's turned on Lyo? Who's stick stuck with Lyle? Lyo? Lyo. <laughs> Okay, so, and just a note, uh, some things happened while we were recording. Uh, Matt was like, oh, we need to we need to do something with this, and went and recorded a little shit, and then, like, so I just said it to me. Um, it changes some of the things that we discussed, so I, I just fucking removed them. I, I, don't, I don't care. Um, he did, like, a load of takes, sent me an unedited t file, uh, but fuck you, Matt, basically. Uh, you're a retard. Uh, I have left in your edits, <laughs> because the... <laughs> <laughs> because uh yeah fuck you uh get better at your job buddy <laughs> all right so there is an update going on in the art all right hold on let me start uh yo everyone uh thank you for listening to our episode by the way but uh while recording or at least while uh, after recording there was a massive update <sighs> all right so uh beckett i'm gonna read this again because I'm just trying to make sense of everything while it's happening. Um, all right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Now Recording. Uh, so there's been a massive update w w after we've already recorded the episode. Hopeless Peaches has come out with a statement. Oh, fuck. All right. I'm starting over again, Beckett. I'm starting over again. Uh, third take. Third take. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Now Recording. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so there's been a state. Uh, God damn it. You guys see the shit I have to work with? <laughs> Ah, oh, he's gonna fucking kill me. Hello, everyone. So, there's been an update with uh, Hopeless Peaches. After we got done recording, uh, uh, there's been a statement made in her, the Discord, the Senate Discord server. Uh, Hopeless Peaches put out this long statement as well as a Google Doc. And in it, they read, uh, Hello, all. This is the last you'll be seeing of me in Senate and any uh, associated circles. This may come as a surprise, but it's something that I have been thinking about for a while. And given how things are going now, I feel it isn't right for me to stick around. When I've made my morals crystal clear. None of this is influenced by the claims coming out about Leo. None. It is my own personal experience as well as a compilation of events uh, I'm after witnessing within Senate what happened without my knowledge. I cut off multiple people who acted that way in the past, and it would be absolutely hypocritical for me to... Keep Leo around, especially given the absolute flashbang the various older messages truly were. Definitely puts that call that's linked in that statement into a whole new perspective. It took a lot of deep thinking and looking over what I've seen, and I'm not happy at all. Below, I have linked a more raw statement in relation to my feelings on the matter, as well as a statement from Aaron on their departure from the Senate server and the abuse they've endured. Goodbye, everyone. And take care. And then there's a Aaron statement. Um, this is Aaron. The reason I'm leaving the Senate and why I have uh, purged all my social media is to get away from Leo Convoy. It has uh, taken me a long time uh, to realize the absolute uh, the abuse didn't stop, and to say to, to myself that Thomas Guerrera is an abuser. This is my final statement, and the last you'll see. So Aaron's statement 
is Hopeless Peaches. And they put out a Google Doc. Um, let me see here. God. Hey, so this is the this is a Google Doc. Hey, this is Hopeless Peaches, and this is the last time you'll hear from me. First of all, I want to again apologize for my part in the Rosa call in 2022. I wanted to state so earlier, but everything else that piled on since made me shut down, and well, here we are. If you've been in the Senate for a while, you'd know of the Rosa call and that I have regretted that call daily and genuinely uh, done what I can do to change the server so that it, though so that in so that it in but it doesn't erase the call though and that's why I've pushed myself but I can't push myself for Senate anymore. The reason I'm leaving Senate and why I have purged all my social media is to get away from Leo Convoy and to find myself again. I used to say that I have been abused online for 10 years straight, but it it has taken me a long time to realize the abuse didn't stop. And to say that myself, uh, Thomas, I'm not going to say his last name because Leo Convoy probably likes the flag stuff, but I think this is Leo Convoy's full name, is an abuser. Uh, it's scary to admit it, but I feel it's true. He isn't a child predator that I uh, am aware of, as some people have claimed, but it, it but that doesn't mean he's some savior of the innocent either. Thomas is a man who has taken vulnerable people, most he knew as minors, who have been trauma, uh, who have been who have trauma relating to sexual abuse by older men to fulfill his fantasy of a perfect family. Always had been sexually abused by older parental figures. Jordan, Jay, Opal, and myself, my groomer, posed the same family dynamic. Recently, I have found out that Thomas tried to put push two other young, barely legal AFABs, was, was legal AFABs, all, all furries or bastards, uh, who were, I don't know what that means, who were specifically groomed by Joshua Vita, uh, Thomas's ex-friend. And this dynamic, uh, in this di into this dynamic too, then treated them like shit when they refused. All of us AFAB and all of us with deep-rooted trauma that made us susceptible to further abuse. Thomas used that to his advantage to play house and if you didn't act how he wanted you to, he would verbally and mentally beat you down into a pulp. This is a pattern, and I didn't see it until now. In mid-late 2022, I was just separated from an abusive partner and was still coming to terms with the abuse I faced IRL and online, which is when I started t uh, talking to Thomas properly. He seemed nice at first, but after a suicide attempt uh, that resulted in my hospitalization, I had uh, age regressed in the aftermath. Thomas pushed the idea of family onto me while I had, was in a vulnerable state, and when I woke up to being in, in this family, I didn't know how to set up, set that boundary again and say no. That was on me. However, how Thomas treated me with the moment I was in that family is not on me, and it's taken me too long to recognize that. For eight months, how long is this? Okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. For eight months, Thomas would verbally and emotionally abuse me. He would use my triggers against me to push me into regressed state, then would scream at me about my own abuse. He would tell me how I must be an abuse apologist because I doubted my grooming experience and made extremely graphic and sexual comments about the abuse Jordan and Opal went through while I was age regressing and begging him to stop as some sadistic way of making a point of what real abuse is. I have no recorded proof of this. But this week, I realized during my social media purge that I do have evidence of this behavior, albeit uh, reined in. On the 28th of February, 2023, Thomas and the old Senate mods had a call with an 18-year-old victim of Joshua who will have their identity protected due to the comments made by Thomas being too disgusting to ever, to ever want to be forever tied to this person. And they present a link to the call. By accident and verifying information and in, uh, about other young individuals Thomas was weird with, Lumi stumbled upon even further evidence of Thomas, 35, 36 at the time, berating and slut-shaming the victim in this call, 16, 17 at the time, as well as mocking and dismissing their sexuality because they were abused by a man. This is still publicly accessible in the server. This behavior is proven in this call to have not changed due to Thomas's continuous homophobic and slut-shaming comments. If this is how he would treat victims in front of other people, I hope you can understand, even in some small way, how he would treat me for eight months straight behind the scenes when he can and has lied about the severity of what he did to me. 
how this victim was treated was disgusting, and I can assure it was not a one-time thing. Thomas Guerrero keeps stating he has changed since the Rosa call in 2022 while lying behind the scenes and pretending the work, uh, the work me and Lumi did to restructure the Senate was on him alone. Despite the fact that Lumi and I left for the Senate for a while because of Thomas's lack of accountability and refusal to let us uh, put ch changes into places, we came back because we thought Thomas changed and genuinely wanted to have a better place for people to later find out uh, he only placated us because he ran out of mods. Thomas would say he wanted mods who hold him accountable. But when I called him out for, the, for his continued ableism towards Rosa in February of 2024, he snapped at me and Kay Cosmic had to step in and stop him from yelling at me, only for him to then pull me into a private call and yell at me there instead. On 22 of February 2024, Thomas had a call with a person called Raven from the SEC and was aggressive from the get-go, uh, get despite Raven being civil with him. Thomas then chose to be, by his own admission, assess their cognitive ability in front of over 100 people. I asked him to stop when we tried to make him stop, and Thomas kept going, which made me have uh, to uh, server mute and proceeded to get enraged by at the mod staff. And then Call came at me with only aggression about it when he heard from his wife that I was in distress and suicidal. Um, Thomas has pushed me to the point of self-harm and suicide. Uh, it, even up to present day, I thought it was only, I thought it was only me who was being affected. So I bottled up. I wasn't always treated like shit. So I convinced myself it was fine. I was told to get over being sexually abused only a couple months after it happened. Oh my fucking, uh, uh when I was still dealing with the PTSD flashbacks of it, I was told I let my groomer get to the, uh, she's, she's such a fucking victim. You let my groomer get to the other people because I didn't realize what he did to me until I was 21 years old and lost his information for Thomas. To then backtrack when I told other people what he said and pretend it never happened. Recalling how he spoke that victim uh, spoke to that victim in 2023, how he would use that same language against me for eight months straight, how he defended Kumo, pushing a girl uh, to self-harm in February 22nd, 2023, how he's treated uh, his friends, and recently how he's been using ableist language to justify the Rosa call and to justify embarrassing Raven. I realize I can't be his lightning rod anymore. I got to still... No more to go. Fuck. After that point, I just distanced myself from Thomas. Since rewatching the recording of the call, I made it. I made to protect myself after warnings from the mods. It made me reflect on how I've been treated for these past two years. I thought I could collect myself and understand how best to cut him off softly in a, in a way he wouldn't blow up. But it seems even just staying with a group of friends away from the Senate and Leo, uh, away from Senate and Leo Cumboy was too much for him. I found out Thomas has been going around to commentary channels before and after this point, saying his own outrageous beliefs and passing them off as mine, claiming he solely changed Senate after the Rosa call, despite, despite me yelling and uh, being yelled at and belittled for months after the call. that call whenever I begged him to restructure the server, and creepiest of all to me. He pretended to him... Hmm. He pretended to him... He pretended him and I were still close and f fam familial. We haven't uh, been family for a while, but Thomas would refuse to give me that space and made me feel unsafe correcting him. Thomas didn't want the public to know uh, he mistreated yet another family member. I have so much regret for not seeing through this, his persona sooner. I always brushed it off as it just, as it just being an issue with me and that I deserved everything I got, especially with how Thomas would seem genuinely nice whenever he wasn't being questioned. When he, when the call in February 2023 happened, I was shaken to my core and regressed and forgot most of everything, including the fact that I was the one who had the recording. I'm, I'm sorry. I feel honest. <laughs> this is so fucking gay. I feel stupid, honestly. Thomas would go on, go to such extremes, make me feel unsafe, and that I had to be around. In the first eight months, my known suicidal ideation would be used as an excuse by Thomas to threaten me with police visits and being put away for a while. If I stopped responding to or hung up on Thomas when he was screaming at me, I could have just refused to listen and plead a case uh, for myself if Thomas did this. But at the time, I was freshly out of an abusive relationship and was constantly pushed to regression. I know better now. Thomas, a real father, wouldn't yell and scream at family. A real father wouldn't use their kids' trauma against them as a means of winning petty arguments. A real father wouldn't threaten to divorce his own wife 
to keep their kids in check. A real father wouldn't make graphic sexual comments while their age regressing and begging you to stop. Hell, uh, a real father wouldn't take months, multiple scoldings, being cut off, and having your entire script reworked just to respect their family's gender, only to keep calling me your dear daughter despite me being neither a woman nor part of your family. Stop pretending we're close. Stop pretending you're looking out for me. Stop pretending we're in contact. Full stop. You told me many times that the reason you have had real kids, biological or adopted, was because you knew... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. pause, pause, pause. I read that wrong. You told me many times that the reason you never had real kids, biological or adopted, was because you knew you would abuse them. You know this. Stop beating down on vulnerable victims of sexual abuse and instead get some goddamn help. Also, stop pretending you care about victims of grooming. You found the information of my groomer and all you did was use my abuse against me. Play it down because it wasn't Joshua Vita and tell me straight you only desired to make fun of my groomer in a Senate call. Not to help report his predatory actions and you blame me, a victim of his, for his potential other predatory actions. I have deleted everything. Uh, I had deleted everything to be away from you and to finally find myself. Uh, there's a little more here. Um, there's this thing on age regression. For those of you who don't know, uh, who don't know to understand, uh, for those of who don't know to understand this statement, Thomas included apparently, it is a trauma response in which the brain shuts down and reverts to an earlier de de developmental stage. For me, I regress to points around 5 to 10 years old mentally. Extremely damaging to talk to somebody uh, age regressing in a way you wouldn't talk to an actual child, as it can result in re-traumatizing said regress. Thomas knew all this and chose to, uh, choose to, chose to abuse it. Note, this testi testimony has nothing to do with Jay and Jordan's claims. I could go into full detail about how it is flatly disgusting to knowingly run to Fox Mafia and people who have said uh, platformed videos saying how I should be sexually assaulted. I cannot comment one way or the other in the specificities of the relationship with Thomas as I was never present for it. That being said, I won't just dismiss the fact that Thomas has been an abuser. For them, uh, to the usual suspects who have been stalking me for nearly half a decade now, who will certainly be laughing reading all of this, like the last time I was abused, I'm sorry after four years, your only topic is gone now. Hope you find a new way to make rent. And then they have a tweet with Omnia saying, working on a vid because I need to pay rent. And that's from January 30, 2024. Doesn't downplay trauma for easy money, my ass. So let me get this straight. She puts this whole Google Doc as like a takedown of uh, Leo Convoy, right? Uh, and then she ends it by taking a petty shot at Omnia. This is the epitome of the art community. Uh, yeah, I don't believe any of this fucking shit she just wrote with the whole age regression and all this goddamn shit. It's stupid. Fucking stupid. She's throwing Leo Convoy under the bus to save herself. It's his self. Whatever the fuck. All right, come on. Like, I changed my gender and now you got to say my pr right pronouns now. Fucking goddamn it. All right. He, he, as in Hopeless Peaches, is throwing Leo Convoy under the bus. It's extremely obvious. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what's happening is I'm sure there's going to be other updates to this. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can, I, I, maybe there'll be a live stream. We can read this doc to, uh, the chat, but nonetheless, here's your update on the doc. Um, yeah, Beckett, sorry about the little editing mistakes. It's a, it's such a shame that all these videos are like hours and hours of content that I have to sift through because there is some quality interest in here that I like, uh, about, this stuff it's just so hard to watch all of this and it's so convoluted uh, i wish i wish someone needs to make like an it, someone needs to make like an update video to cecil mcfly's video and give more context to all of this to explain we're, it more. we're kind of doing that right now we are we like i think beckett and i have been like in the trenches uh and by the way like helped by some other unpaid orbiters uh shout, shout out to tumbleweed has been instrumental with this research as well yeah. Um, because yes, that's what makes the situation virtually impenetrable for anyone outside, not only, not just outside of the art commentary community, but for anyone who hasn't been around for years, because there are so many plays, players and tangential dramas, and it's hours of content. Like Cecil McFly watched 200 hours 
of videos for that um, for our one, and that on that stops at end of twenty twenty one. Yeah, I asked Cecil. I I asked Cecil. I was like, "You gonna make an update video?" She was like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> So, so the way I put it is, and because because you, you we started chatting over Twitch poll stuff because you were like, there's so much content, like, and there's so yeah. much to pick through. Listen, this is like Twitch poll if it was about ten times the size and everyone was smaggle but twenty times as retarded. And yeah. nobody like, fucks. That is, that's the and nobody only fucks. yeah, nobody fucks. It's it is incomprehensibly convoluted. And because like earlier we were saying, there's like. Uh, the difference between dramas is, hey, you trace some art or you're a, you'd set a racism to, hey, you groomed kids. Um, the problem is that all of these and the cancellations and the beefs are all treated at the same level. Yeah. Like, if, if you can be hated for grooming kids at the same level as somebody who is hated for Tracing. stealing someone's artwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's fucking... Well, really, I was sitting here, uh, because I'm going to be honest with you guys, most of what you've said has gone over my head. Hopefully the viewers know what's going on. But fundamentally, the way that I understand it, right, is the players that we're looking at, mostly Peaches and Leo, they were shit people, right? Yes. They, yep. they behaved shittily in the past, but they had no blanket to really say why they're being shitty. They were just being shitty for the sake of being shitty. And then they built this community, which has the guise of doing good things and being shitty. Accusing other people it, of being shitty, yeah, that's a whole kind of issue. No, but it gives them the it gives them a reason to be shitty. Yeah, yeah, right. They're, they're internet I am doing trolls. this. Yes, the gold. internet trolls that have like created this environment where they can be the shitty human beings that they always were, with the guise of a purpose or a cause. Absolutely, and I think you can apply that to Lyo adopting these adults in need of help because. As uh, I think Beckett mentioned, that yeah, Peaches is the remaining child. Uh, and it's because the other ones, the, the ones that actually had moved in with Lyo and his wife, um, they have since disavowed Lyo and um, have come out saying that he treated them poorly and actually did not give a single shit about their well-being. Yeah, I, I saw one part where uh, the Lyo convoy went after one of the uh, the, the kid's mom because... He claimed that the mother uh, was basically uh, didn't do anything about this this kid getting sexually uh, harassed. When in yeah. reality, from what the kid said, the mom swooped right in, uh, kicked the the person out that was doing it, and uh, yeah, it, it just turned it, it, and and Leo kind of ran with a different. Uh, well, that was that was story. Jordan. That, yeah, that, there was that, there was, that was a lot story. around that situation. Yeah, there was a GoFundMe, and the GoFundMe was also supported by another groomer called. Uh, it's a whole thing, Vida. but yeah, yeah. like like they they came up with a plan on how to deal with that. Do you, do you, do you want to hear it, Matt? It's it's genius. You'll love it. You're talking about the laptop plan, right? Yeah, I'm talking about the laptop plan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Go for it. So Listen to this, Beavers. Was... Oh wait, let me let me set the story. All right, Beavers, are you here? Okay. Beavers, I am here. I'm here. All right. So, uh, one of the uh, Leo convoy children, while they were still a minor, correct, Beckett? Yeah, sixteen. Uh, so they claimed they were being sexually harassed by their mother's boyfriend. Uh, and Soldier. Leo Convoy, yeah, Leo Convoy had a great idea. Go ahead, Beckett. So they sat in this call. They're, they're brainstorming. How do we? How do we save this kid? And and their idea was it was uh, I believe Vida, Lyo, and for no good reason. Um, and their their grand idea was if she keeps her laptop camera on because it was a girl at the time. Um. Oh, Lord. And films it. Oh Lord! Then that could be <laughs> evidence to the police. <laughs> so the grand scheme for catching a groomer was the production of child pornography. Yeah. <laughs> and and when they didn't like the laptop idea because someone said, "Oh Bruh. well, you know that they, they he might spot that." They they then said, "Well, why don't you turn your phone camera on and prop it up and face it to the pet?" You know, you know what, like, what if it falls? Oh what if, my what god! Falls? You know what a better idea would have been? Just fucking get a trap with a carrot in it. Maybe he'll fucking go and come in and eat the carrot, and then you got him. You know? Like, with, like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, in their defense, they weren't suggesting you know to luring the predator with the kid. It was more like, well, the predator is already there, so if they're gonna like assault you anyway, you might as well. Like it. a fucking nature <laughs> documentary. Yeah, <laughs> nature is amazing. 
Is this um is this like a good time to go into a bit, a bit you know into kind of the Senate mechanics or yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh the Senate the culture of the Senate um uh, also updates on what the Senate's doing nowadays go ahead Hellbent so so we already covered a bit of it like the history and stuff um and I think we already have an understanding that um kind of within the server um Lyo is positioned as a role model a moral arbiter. His approval is everything. So there is actually a creator, a small creator called uh, Tommy's House Blogs, um, and they've been interviewing ex-Senate members. And so ex the ex-members, they describe the Senate as a cult of personality. Um, so they uh, they talk about like yeah, having to walk on eggshells. Um, they, st they actually still have this uh, funny dynamic that there are quote-unquote joke rules I still have no idea what they fucking are, and I've been in the server for two days. I can't figure it out. And if you violate them, you get a quote-unquote punishment. For example, uh, if you post what is deemed cringe, they'll make you draw something. Like that one person describes they had to draw a banknote with Queen Seraphine's face on it. Uh, and Don't then, they make you draw, like, zoo porn and shit? Yeah, I want to, I want well, to clarify. That's I, I want to clarify with this. So there was a mod called uh, Benji. Uh, ben, ben, Benjai, whatever the fuck the name is. So, the Senate rules. The Senate has standard rules, and then what they describe as joke rules. There are currently mm -hmm. in the region of eight to 900 of these joke rules. Yeah, 924 um, or something, I believe. Um, so, there can you can be punished for breaking these rules. Now, one of the punishments was uh, the request to draw uh, bestiality pornography. This included a dragon fucking itself, and a horse being fucked by a dolphin, um, I believe, which is also another comic that's been spread around. So, yeah, these, these, you know, the Senate itself isn't like a clean, good server. It, it, some fuck shit has happened in there. Is this a, is this a situation that Leo Convoy is overseeing this, or is this like the yes. mods are running amok and they're um, doing their own thing? No, mods are not running amok. Like, so there are, uh, they are definitely a very militaristic word. Who has the mod roles and what and what they do? Um, so the mods they have they have the powers, but Lyo is definitely overseeing all of it. Um, so more severe infractions, right, or disagreements, would be brought to a Senate call, and that would be the what, what we are already familiar with: the multi-hour voice calls with tens of people joining in. So X members testified that every single conflict had to be resolved on a dedicated Senate call. So, like, the option of having you one-on-one -on -one with Lyo, or more accurately, one-on-two, -on -two, because Peaches would most often be there, was the reserved for very select few people that Leo liked. Otherwise, you get this public humiliation session, and the call would not end until the person on trial was completely broken down. So, what is the most interesting element, essentially, of the Senate to me is... Um, Let's say you know you no longer use ableist language. Let's say you don't have any not safe for work minor shenanigans. The I what I am getting, and this is my impression from just observing it for a couple of days as well, is that this is this is a server full of people who are not actually interested in conflict resolution. There, so there is no kind of point. There is there is no resolution in sight. It's always just a battle, a war, a shit slinging. Uh, and so that's the purpose of the calls where they are, uh, you know, re quote unquote, resolve conflict and make people take accountability. But actually, it's just to uh, grandstand and bully people. And, um, you know, I haven't seen any of the more recent calls, but um, from how the general mob reacts in chat to people that come in and try asking questions, um, etc., it's it, it's quite clear that they still they're not interested in um, you know improvement or resolution, but um, I have a clip from one of those interviews, and uh, this clip I believe answers the question that we all had before, which is why the fuck would anyone join and stay on a sixty people call when you're getting bullied? Uh, and there was actually apparently a strategy to ensure this. To get into a call. What they'll do is they'll put their socials um, and Discord ping of the server usually followed with you know what to do. Um, because once it's been decided by Senate that you're going to get into a call, well, the members are going to make sure that you get into a call. <clears throat> what they do is they split into groups of tens or even hundreds to harass individual for days or weeks until they break 
So by the time that most people join into a Senate call, usually they're willing to admit to anything, even if they never did it or it's completely out of context or it's being heavily exaggerated because they're already broken beyond belief. You know, they'll say anything just to get people off their back. They, they just want to be left alone at that point. If they need to be, you know, a YouTube content farm video, so be it. Just please stop harassing me. Stop harassing my family. Stop harassing my friends. And that's a tactic that they do constantly. But that's also the point that they don't record or show to the public. They just need a monster. Yeah. And if the person not one, they'll break them into it for YouTube views or you know, that reputation, because to keep a reputation, you have to keep putting the bad guys away for some reason. According to this person, at least, um, they have a strategy of ensuring that a person, once they have been marked to be in the Senate call, does join because they essentially harass them and everyone they associate associated with on socials. Um, and then obviously that they stay in that call because they know that, and that's, uh, to me at least, explains why, for example, Rosa doesn't leave the call. Obviously, the second part of the explanation is that it might have not even occurred to them. And actually, um, I think yesterday, somebody also, somebody new joined the server and uh, essentially asked the question, why did you have Rosa in the call and not the server owner? And immediately the person was like, stop throwing accusations. And they were like, what the fuck? I didn't do anything. And then they, they got promptly kicked out. Mm -hmm. But I would say the explanation is, um, well, because it was easier and like the server owner probably knew better and was like, no, fuck this, because they tried to get them uh, and reached out to them. And uh, obviously they being more uh, fully mentally capable, they were like, yeah, absolutely not. But Rosa was easier to bully. So that's yeah. pretty heavy. Well, I think the fundamental takeaway from what we've just seen is that we've already established that there is a cult of personality with um, Lyo, right? Lyo and Peaches, that yeah. is. With Lyo and Peaches in that server, they are the head of their cult, so-called cult, and they are employing cultish behavior to mm. uh, enforce things. Or it's almost like it's almost like they have this group. Okay, so this is how I see it. Right, mm -hmm. they've got this group of people, and the the server users. I'm not talking about admins. Blah 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 blah. They have this group of server users, their general pool, and those people are essentially LARPing that they are in a community. Yeah. Right, they are in this yeah. grand community that is so important, and then it's almost like they're feeding them. They understand why they're there, and so they need to feed them. It mm -hmm. cannot go too long without us uh, feeding our cattle, kind of thing. And so yeah. they implement these mechanisms to get that going, because obviously yeah. people people love tearing people apart. I got a, I got a great example of this. Yeah, let's let's watch this real quick. That'd be fine. Real quick, key unmute. Yes. How old are you? I'm ashamed to admit it, but I'm 22. Then I expect you pay very close attention to my words. I expect you to show Susie respect. You will not raise your voice. <laughs> I expect you to pay very close attention to my words. <laughs> I can't tell which one has the developmental delay at that imagine, point. Imagine I if I went to a fucking uh, VC with Doug and started being like, Doug, I expect you to pay attention to every single word I say right now. I oh, yeah, that's what you, you said before we started filming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep watching this. To her, you will not make excuses. You will not lie to her, and you will show her the kindness that she is owed for even having this conversation with you. Do you understand me? I understand. Dude, pause for a second. Yeah. Because Just pause for a second before we continue. Right? right? How to all the fucking liar fans that find this video? This is your someone, leader, right? This is your. This leader. is the guy. This is the guy, bro. <laughs> you the one you want to put on a fucking pedestal? They you fucking, fucking retards. They love it. This is what they sounds call like for. a bespectacled nerd, bro. <laughs> That's exactly what oh, he fuck. is. Yeah, he, he, he is. This is... Okay, so, so I keep saying this on streams. 
I think on the internet there are a few rules you should have for yourself, uh, like as a self-respect thing. Like there's there's just basic things, and one of them is don't let yourself get bullied by the chess club of the internet. This guy and this group are the fucking chess club, and there is like there's no coming back from that. The fact that so many people have let this guy, this freak, <laughs> do this to well, them is shocking. You it's notice actually, the pattern, right? The shocking. only people that like obey this guy are guys that talk like this. Hi, 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 Leo. Yeah, I'm only 22 years old. Like, these are the people he, that he he uh, leads. Uh, a bunch of fucking mushmouth retards. Like, it, it, yep. it, it's, it's all people that uh, have, uh, they're all followers. They need a leader. And this guy fits, fits, the, fits the bill because he's like an anime fucking uh, main character, basically. You know what I would want to do? Yeah. I want to do a live stream, and I want to do my own version of the Senate on a oh. stage. Bring anybody that's related to this topic, whether it's Leo Convoy, Mitch Leaf. Get the fuck out of here, Mitch. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Uh, le- You're doing it Leaf- already. You're doing it already. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Mitch. You're not part of the yeah. stage. With, fuck you. Whether you it's need to Leo- take accountability. Whether it's Leo Convoy, whether it's fucking um, uh, uh, the Hopeless Peaches, anyone related, tangentially related to these people, all the detractors, the Akumos, the Kumos, the, the fucking doodle diaper people, Dylan Thomas, fucking anyone that's somewhat related to this Senate. She's shit. your warriors. Yeah. Come on. Let's do a stage. I want to create the new Senate and I want everybody to come in and I want all of us to talk with each other. I want people on Leo's side. I want people against Leo. I want people that are fence sitting. Uh, Serafina, all you trans retards. Come on. <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. I would like to talk to Leo. Mm, um, that would be, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. All right. So I think we talked enough uh, about this. Is are we missing anything? Because I know it's there's a lot to there's a lot more to happen. I think there was a what, what what's that person's name that uh you guys were talking about? Ugh, there's so many fucking names. I forgot. Mm, yeah. There was a new video that just uploaded. Uh, Crystal Flame just put out a video. My response to Leo Convoy. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. yeah so there's more updates coming. At, 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 like at every fucking five seconds, it seems like. As are we missing anything else? I would just, uh, uh, I would only want to finish up by reading some quotes from the Senate about now recording and Leia something. But, sure. Uh, Beckett, do you have anything of actual, uh, factual value? Um, okay, uh, another Reddit's note. We got the statement. We know what happened. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to pretend that I was completely right and predicted everything. And uh, you can't prove any different. Fuck you. Yeah. All right. Uh, did you want to read some, some yes. of the stuff? Yes. Um, yeah. So there is not that much uh, at the moment. But um, so somebody linked the uh, previous stream you did with Beckett Mm -hmm. and says, this is from a very toxic and unorganized podcast on kick called now recording. What? We're on kick? (laughs) We're on kick? (laughs) On kick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, 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 they said it's kick. (laughs) And uh, they also followed up with, oh, I don't trust anybody on kick. It promotes gambling, etc. So we're not on kick. (laughs) I know. But that's um, where our career's going. Yeah. We will eventually be on kick. <laughs> We're just hoping to get a big enough audience that they'll follow us over yeah. there. Yeah. But you see what I mean? They don't even have to use actual facts to disregard something. To be fair, this is just one person. So there is not like a whole mob of people being like, I'm never watching this yet. After this episode, probably there will be. But uh, they did call you toxic and unorganized. And uh, they did get True. you on the unorganized. Yeah. Uh, so then... Oh, yeah, uh, no. Yeah, then, then they double down, uh, saying, hmm, Leia has also been on the Now Recording podcast on Kick, so that's fun. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, then uh, Leia also gets another shout-out, saying, all she does is sound like an absolute Karen harassing disabled people on stream while having an 18-plus profile picture. Dork. True, 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 true. Very dork. True. Coming in with a dork. <laughs> and then finally... And what kind of doofus names their podcast the now recording? Come on, you're not smart. What? What do you mean? Yep. I mean, that was the I smartest know. thing we ever did. I mean, they also said if, if, the, if you knew the, the options prior to yeah. that, now recording was a gem. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. Don't worry, they hated the cope and seat as well. Like, oh, you posted it. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, you know. Now recording may be a shit name, but after this episode, we will be recording everything you fuckers say.
Yeah. And until we will find it. Episode. This is going to serve <laughs> as the springboard for us covering you. We are informing our audience of the pieces of shit that you all are. I, I just want to say to Leo Convoy, um, a lot of people, I, I keep seeing Leia something on her streams being like, you need to take accountability. I don't want you to take accountability. I want you to remove yourself from the census or whatever the fuck it's called. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. You joined me just joined to that, by the way. I hate you. A, but the thing is, right, and I know, again, the people are going to fucking watch this, right? Some of them, I'm sure, even though they won't admit that they have, right? Your fucking leader is a bespectacled nerd that dresses up as a lion and builds Gundams in his spare time. Do you have oh, nothing man, better to do with your again. lives? Mitch, let us do <laughs> <right? laughs> God like damn, really, dude. dudes. You, there are so there's cooler people that you can follow on the internet, surely. What? All right, guys, and that has been a great episode of Wait, Now No, we're Matt not Pitt done yet. God off. damn it! <laughs> no, I'm trying to get fucking Mitch to do it. You fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> did right, get my DM, go, Mitch? Yeah, I did. Go I've got it right here. Um, go boy. Those who, you know what? I'm I'm go really boy. bad at um podcasting because I join oh. halfway through and my headphones don't work, and so I don't hear when Matt tells me to leave, and so I leave because my headphones don't work, and then I finally join and it's right at the end. But those who are bad with money, <laughs> not podcasting, is Joe Vile. Channel has been deleted. Okay, K Huck Cast Pigeon Salad. Ringtail, Echo of Tragedy, Brooke A, Everborn, Strictly Patrick, Fresh Brewski, Jacob Thomas, Ryan, I nearly said Ryan Reynolds, Reynold Hughes, and Mame. I hope I did that correctly. I, yes, I have. If Otherwise, you want to be I bad with money, you can pay fourteen ninety nine a month and get your name set up to every episode, every live stream. You can't afford that. You can come with Beaver Lover, get you in a priority call. I get you nine ninety nine a month. Uh, also, early access to now recording episodes, uh, podcast episodes. Show. Four ninety nine a month is the Stumpies gets you access to uh, now recording live membership live streams as well as member exclusive membership episodes as well. Uh, also uh, behind the paywall on the Discord server, all that good stuff. Listen, we're not done with this art drama. All right, we're, we're this is just this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Uh, Mitch somehow booked us with a uh, with a with a new YouTuber. What's her name, Mitch? I forgot. Scum Scumbo. So um, Diana. No, I don't know. I just made that up. <laughs> Mitch, you booked a YouTuber and you don't even remember the name? No, I do know. I do. I do remember her name. Her name is Frankie, but she goes by Scum of what? a Bitch. Yeah, Scum of a Bitch. Uh, she's like this short Justin Wang kind of YouTuber, uh, and she's really into like art and stuff. So we're gonna have her on to talk more about art drama and, and stuff like that in a in, nice. a in a future episode. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, keep your eyes open because we're gonna continue this art saga. All right, you haven't you haven't heard the last from now recording. Uh, I want to talk to Leo Convoy. Get me Leo Convoy. Roar. Now, Convoy. Da, 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 da. Sorry. <laughs> Thundercats, ho. Uh, yeah, now recording is always recording, I guess. Goodbye.